Hi everyone and welcome to April Faves and Fails. This is my first time back in this chair since I took a little bit of a holiday with my family over Easter. Thank you very much for all of you who sent messages to me telling me to let my hair down and relax. I certainly did that. Although I think we can class my holiday as a working holiday as I was testing out a lot of SPFs for you all for a future video. Definitely stay tuned for that. I'm sure my accountant would completely disagree with me, but that's, you know, what I'm calling it for now. He can argue with me later. <laughs> anyway, welcome to this video. We are gonna be running through all of my ultimate favorites and all of my ultimate faves from all of the products that I've tried on and off camera in the month of April. Let's get straight on with it. I would like to thank Beauty Pie for sponsoring this video today. I've personally been a member of Beauty Pie for a number of years now. They are the first luxury beauty buyers club. I love their products. My mum loves their products. We particularly like the fact that they have really luxurious formulas and we get them for a fraction of the cost. But because I've talked about Beauty Pie on my channel and worked with them several times before, I'm not going to go into masses of depth about the brand and how you can get your hands on the products. What I will say though, if you are thinking of becoming a member, I do have an offer code for you that will allow you to get £10 off your first year's membership. That is running across the bottom of the screen now and it's Gemma sent me. So make sure you use that offer code if you are wanting to sign up for your first membership. If you do want a little bit more information about Beauty Pie as a brand, what products they offer and what products I recommend you buy first if you are a new member because there is a wide variety to choose from and it can be a little overwhelming when you first search the website. I did a video not so long ago, I will link it up here for you and also in the description box. So all that information is in that video. Let's get on with the news. Okay, so just like last month's faves and fails, I just want to remind everybody that my mum has not featured in any sponsored videos for any other brand. If you see my mum in a video, especially the one for I think T. LM Foundation. She has not done that promotion. Um, they have stolen portions of my content that I filmed for this channel and are using it for their own gain. So if you see that, please don't buy that product. My mum is not advertising it. She does not stand behind it. She's never tried it. So it's probably rubbish. <laughs> so yeah stay clear. And if you do see that promotion, please write in the comment section of Facebook or Instagram or wherever you see it that it is a fake ad and just warn people that, you know, it's probably not very good. Okay, let's talk about changes of opinion. Now, this was in my fails category probably a couple of months ago. It's from Lancome and it's the Lash Edol Mascara Waterproof. Now, the reason this was in my fails category because it's a really nice mascara, it always was a really nice mascara, was that it's not like the Lash Edol original formula and uh, with it having the name Lash Edol, I just expected it to perform in the same way as the original version, just be a waterproof alternative. This is now performing in the way that the original Lash E-Doll did. It just took a lot longer to thicken up. Usually a mascara will take around about three to five days to thicken up to the thickness that it then remains for the life of the mascara. This took a lot longer, and I mean a lot longer, probably um, maybe a month and a half. It's now at that thickness that I really, really like. I took this away on holiday and it's a good job that I did. I will come on to that in a second. This was really, really waterproof. I've got it on today. I love it. It seriously holds a curl and I take back my original comments. So yeah, this is a change of opinion for me. I adore it. I think it's great. But again, word of warning, this does not perform like the original Lash Idol Mascara until you've been using it for around about six weeks. That was my experience anyway. Let's jump into the fails. There are three fails in this video. Uh, let's start with another mascara because this one seriously disappointed me because unlike the Lash Idol Mascara, this mascara performed in exactly the same way as the original version. I bought this again to go on holiday with. I only wanted to take waterproof mascaras with me because I knew I was going to be really, really hot. It wasn't particularly humid in Dubai, but it was warm. <laughs> 
really, really warm. So I decided I was going to purchase the Benefit Bad Gal Bang Waterproof Mascara. I loved the Benefit Original Bad Gal Bang. This performs, like I said, exactly the same. This goes onto the lashes beautifully. This is seriously epic black in colour, exactly the same applicator wand, just beautiful. And uh, I was really excited when I first applied this. The only problem that I have with this, and it's a major one, is it performs exactly the same as the original meaning that the original wasn't waterproof and neither is this. <laughs> this seriously smudged on me and I know I was putting it through its paces being in 40 degree heat. This did not perform well at all. I've tried it again. In this country, it is not 40 degrees in the UK and it still did not perform well. This is not waterproof. Has anybody had the same experience as me? I'm not quite sure whether I've got a dud. Is this faulty? Am I the only one? This is just not waterproof. If I dunked my head underwater, I would expect this to hold. I would expect a waterproof mascara to be able to withhold a swimming pool. I've been swimming in loads of waterproof mascaras. They've never flaked on me. They've never smudged. This transfers all over the shop. So if you were thinking of trying this and you desperately need a waterproof mascara, I would probably steer you away from it. It's a lovely mascara, but um, yeah, no different to the original, which isn't waterproof. Okay, next product in the fails category. Now this is sort of semi in the middle of, I love it and I really dislike it at the same time. Depending on where I use this, this is amazing and also awful. So this is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. If I am spot concealing on my face, this is the best concealer ever. If you are wanting to spot conceal, a little brush, tiny weeny bit of this, pop a little bit on, pat it out with your finger to blend, superb, stays there all day, doesn't budge, doesn't move, doesn't oxidize. It is unbelievably good. Put this anywhere near your under eyes, you are going to look 120 within the space of around about an hour. <laughs> and I don't think it took my under eyes that long to look like that. I wore this in a couple of videos that I filmed before I went away on holiday and while I was editing them I could have cried because it was one of those situations where I was filming numerous videos in one day. I'd done my makeup first thing in the morning and by the second video I looked in the lens and I was just like, <laughs> I can't do all my makeup again because I don't have time so we're just gonna have to roll with it. So you may have seen my under eyes in previous videos that aired whilst I was away and thought, what has she done? <laughs> this is what I did. So word of warning if you are thinking of trying this, and I know it's not a new product, it's been around forever, but I'd never tried it and I heard so many good things. Yeah, this is not for under your eyes, especially if you have dryness or any hint of dryness at all. I can pop this on the driest of the dry skin if I'm spot concealing, but underneath the eyes, oh no. No, 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 there you go. <laughs> the last fail in this video, you all know it's coming. If you watched my video ruined by one product, this was the one product. This is the Nimia setting spray. It's the set it, forget it. It's quite a nice fine mist, but it's not fine enough. It completely changed the look of my foundation, made me look sweaty, made my foundation look like it had been on my skin all day. Now this isn't all doom and gloom. Firstly, this definitely works as a setting spray. This definitely made my foundation and the rest of my products last all day. It definitely does set your face. That's what it's supposed to do. It definitely delivers. But there is nowhere on here that says that it's going to 
create a really dewy finish, which is why I wasn't expecting it to completely change the look of my foundation, and uh, that is what it did. If you are wanting a dewy setting spray, however, you are wanting your makeup to last all day, you may absolutely love this. It just wasn't for me. I thought I looked a little bit of a sweaty mess, quite honestly, so um, a bit of a disappointment. Let's jump straight into the favourites, and I have been gagging to talk about this product for the last three weeks, and I haven't been allowed because it didn't officially launch until the 28th of April. So I can now talk about it. I can now open my mouth and shout about it from the top of a hill. This is luxurious beyond belief, and it is lovely on the skin. I've got one of these and I've been using it for the last three weeks. It is out of this world beautiful. My mum has also had one of these of her own, been trying it for the last three weeks and also loves it. So this is from Beauty Pie and it is the Youth Bomb 360 Degree Radiance Concentrate Serum. This was created by a dermatologist called Dr. Andrew Markey and it's taken three years to put this formula together. It is beautiful. So let me show you the formula. It comes in a glass bottle which is extremely elegant and it comes with a little push down pipette. Mine fills only halfway. I'm not sure if it's just mine that does that or whether everybody else's fills the entire way. But believe me, half a pipette is all you need for the whole face and some people will find that that goes down the neck as well. This is stunning. So I'm just going to apply one drop on the back of my hand there and show you how fluid this is. But even though this is really liquidy, this doesn't feel watery when you apply it to the skin. It's not a heavy formula, it's a really lightweight formula, but it feels rich on the skin. This feels like it is doing its job. You can feel it. It doesn't have a stickiness to it. It just feels really nourishing and rich on the skin. Perfect for a more mature skin, especially if you have any hint of dryness on your skin. So the formula itself is really, really beautiful. It's fully loaded with concentrated active ingredients. It's got neutropeptides in there, proteins, hexapeptides. It's got soothers and smoothers, brighteners and tighteners, firmers and hydrators, and it's a real glow booster for the skin. So perfect to apply before you apply your makeup, but you can also apply this in the evening as well. There is a slight faint smell very much like honey within this formula. I'm not quite sure if it is honey or whether it just smells a little bit like honey, but there are no essential oils or added fragrances in the formula. So if you do have sensitive skin, you should be absolutely fine with this. Because of all the potent active ingredients within the formula, especially the peptide complexes, this is going to visibly soften your skin, reduce those fine lines and wrinkles, and it feels beautiful. If you want something to nourish your skin, if your skin is dry, if you are a member of Beauty Pie already, definitely pick one of these up. If you're not a member of Beauty Pie already, this is definitely a good reason to become a member. <laughs> Next favorite. I wanted to feature an SPF in this video. There could have been thousands of SPFs in this video. I mean, I've over-exaggerated just slightly, but I have been testing them out within an inch of their lives. I am now going to pass those SPFs on to my mum so we can get her opinion before we collate our ideas and bring a video to you all. Because I just think you would prefer to have both my opinion and also the opinion of somebody with an over 65 skin. So we've just got to wait a little bit longer for that video for my mum to do her thing and then we'll, you know, sit down and film together. But I wanted to share my opinions on this product first because this one is primarily for the body and all the other SPFs I've been testing are primarily for the face. This is the Dr. Sam's Flawless Body Mineral UV SPF 50. It's broad spectrum and it's water resistant for up to 40 minutes, which is 
absolutely amazing. Obviously with any SPF that says it's waterproof, once you get out of the water and towel dry yourself, you should always reapply. So that is what I did. This is a mineral SPF and usually I don't like mineral SPFs because I find them quite drying. This is not drying at all. This is also not thick and sticky like a lot of other mineral SPFs for the body. I have never known a mineral SPF that I have liked in my entire life for the body. And I love this one. I mean, she never disappoints. I love the majority of the Dr. Sam Bunting um, products. I just think the formulas are unbelievable. This is really, really beautiful. Now I've applied quite a lot just for the back of my hand there and it takes hardly any rubbing in. What I would suggest though is you don't go in with a bucket load and apply loads to your skin because it will sit on the surface of your skin if you over apply for your first coat. I recommend that you apply a small amount, let it sink in, and then apply another amount over the top. The SPF protective ingredients in here are zinc oxide nano and titanium dioxide nano, so you don't really get a white cast on the surface of the skin. This is non-drying because it's got shea butter in there, squalane, it's also got soothing aloe in there, and it's a really simplistic formula, and I don't mean that in a negative way. This has hard any ingredients within the formula. Dr. Sam never puts anything unnecessary in her formulas for the skin. Everything that's in here is in here for a reason. There is a purpose for each individual ingredient and the formula feels really quite futuristic and state-of-the-art even though there are very few ingredients within the product. It feels beautiful on the skin, silky soft, it's non-greasy, it's weightless. My experience with mineral body SPF so that they're really thick and heavy and sticky on the skin and also drying and this could not be further from that. Absolutely beautiful, loved using it. My only bugbear with this is because it's so good and it may look like this is a completely unopened bottle, Believe me, there is only around about a quarter, maybe less of the product left in this container. We all use this at some point during the holiday and uh, because it's so good, I didn't want to leave it in the hotel room. I didn't want to waste that quarter of the product. I wanted to bring it home, get my use out of it and squeeze every last inch of this product out of the container. Unfortunately, I didn't pack this well in my case. It went in the hold in the aircraft and it must have been under some considerable weight because the end of this, it, it's, it's slightly opened. I'm not quite sure if you'll see that, but I ended up with Dr. Sam's Flawless Body Mineral UV over all the rest of my toiletries. Luckily, I'd put it in a plastic bag so that it didn't leak over all of my clothes. But uh, yeah, it went everywhere, absolutely everywhere. So I opened the bag and went, oh. <laughs> and then had to figure out which product had actually leaked. I was gutted when I found out it was this one. Anyway, the reason I love this so much, all of the other reasons that I've mentioned, but also this is fragrance free. It doesn't have any essential oils in here. So if you're after a sunscreen that smells like coconut and sunshine, you're not gonna get it here. But it, I mean, it doesn't smell bad. It doesn't smell bad at all, but there's no added fragrance. So if you have a sensitive skin, definitely recommend you get your hands on this to try. It's lovely. There's a lot of skincare in this video. This next one is an oil cleanser and uh, I've spent a lot of money on oil cleansers in the last few years. I not made a secret of the fact that I love a good balm cleanser, I love a good oil cleanser, especially for a first cleanse, there is nothing better. This one is divine and it is a fraction of the cost of a lot of the oil cleansers that I've bought in the past. My favorite oil obsessed from um, Bare Minerals, which was discontinued and they replaced it with something else, which is also divine, is double the price of this. And this, 
I'm not sure if you will be able to tell the difference in a blind test. So this is the Madagascar Centella Light Cleansing Oil. I was gifted this from Stylevana. I think it's around about £10 on the Stylevana website. Run out and get it before it runs out because this stuff is gold. It smells like a spa. So it smells very, very similar to my favorite from Bare Minerals. It feels luxurious on the skin. It's just beautiful. It's got centella extract in here, obviously, because you know, it's called that. It's got that in the name. You'd be a bit disappointed if it didn't have centella in there. It's also got sunflower seed oil, olive oil, jojoba oil, and it does have essential essential oils, bergamot, rose, limonene, and linalool in here. So if you are sensitive to essential oils in your products, you're probably gonna want to give this one a miss, but it's very well balanced in the oils. So this will be very suitable for anybody with an oily skin or a dry skin. It's very, very balanced, so love it. It's effective. All you need to do, apply this to a dry hand, apply this to a dry face, massage. It will remove even waterproof makeup. Splash your hands with water, then massage again to emulsify the oil and then splash it off with water or remove it with a washcloth. It's very effective, it definitely works, and the smell is divine. Moving on to my next favorite, and this is another product that I was gifted in the month of April. I know, I've done quite well, haven't I? Extremely grateful. I wasn't expecting this to land on my doorstep, and if I'm being completely honest, when I saw the image of this product online, I wasn't going to buy it but I am so glad I have it in my collection now. So I've spoken about the Orgasm on the Beach palette in my Faves and Fails before. This is such a beautiful palette, but because I had this palette, I didn't feel it necessary to buy this palette. Boy, was I wrong because they couldn't be more different if they tried. So all of the shades in the Orgasm on the Beach palette are like a shimmer effect. So they do have a lot of radiance to them. They're not highlighters. You can definitely use them as highlighters if you want to, especially these shades here, but uh, you can use them all over the cheek as well. They're all the same formula. Completely different in the Afterglow cheek palette. So you get two matte shades, you get two satin shades, and then there are two metallic shades, which you can, again, use as highlighters if you want to, or shimmery blush all over the cheek. These are so pigmented, they actually frightened me when I first used them. Really frightened me. So, just be warned if you are going to buy this palette, it's punchy. You may need to have a bit of a finishing powder next to you just to buff out the edges. These blend superbly, but again, the color payoff is wow. <laughs> so today I have this shade on, which I just think is glorious. It really is beautiful, but let me tell you, this shade is the perfect shade just to give you that I've been out in the sun a little bit too long look. You can use that on the cheek or use a different shade on the cheek and then just go over the tops of the cheekbone with this shade, maybe a little bit here on the top, just underneath the eyebrow where the sun would naturally hit, maybe a little bit on the forehead just to give you that bit of a glow. This is one of the matte shades and it is my favorite shade in the entire pan. I just think it is multi-dimensional, just, I adore it, absolutely adore it. Although I don't have it on today. Why don't I have it on today? I have no idea, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have this one on today just because I wanted a more subtle look, but I'll show you the swatches on the screen now. It is such a pretty palette and they wear superbly well. They have great longevity. My only criticism with this is that I didn't get it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> because this would have been a great holiday palette. I've not had it off my skin since I've got back from holiday, but yeah, I'm, I'm kicking myself I didn't have it before I went. 
And the last favourite in this video goes to the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. I have a love-hate relationship with this palette, so I will explain myself for the next couple of minutes. I really like the colour story in this palette. It's primarily the reason why I bought it. I love greens, but this is more than just greens. You have those neutral shades in here as well, which I really, really like. This is very beginner friendly and it's also very very wearable so I have this on my eyelids today and I love it. However this is slightly below par the usual quality of Urban Decay and I'm not just talking about this really tacky packaging that looks like I could have bought it from Superdrug at the Barry M counter. And there's nothing wrong with buying Barry M, but if you buy Barry M, you get it for a fraction of the cost that I paid for this palette, which is why I'm a little bit annoyed. The packaging is awful. It's very teenager-ish. It's just not luxurious enough for the amount of money that I paid. Also, the shadows that come in here aren't as pigmented as their usual shadows. They are pigmented enough. And it's, like I said, very beginner friendly. These aren't gonna knock you out. You can dip in the pan. You can swirl your finger in the pan. These are more pigmented than the eyeshadows from, say, Barry M or Revolution, but they are less pigmented than other brands that I pay around about the same price as I've paid for this palette. So I am slightly disappointed with this. I love it all the same, but it's just not one of those palettes for the packaging and also for the colour payoff that fills me with joy. So that's it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the previous video that I did for Beauty Pie with all my recommendations for new members. If you haven't seen that video already, I will link it in the description box for you. There will also be my offer code for Beauty Pie in the description box as well. Gemma sent me to get you £10 off your first year's membership. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below and hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.